Hello, and if you're watching this, welcome to First United Methodist Church of Henrietta. It's a joy to have you worshiping with us online. Uh, as I mentioned, or my name is Pastor Patrick, and uh, I'm one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church, and we are so grateful that you have chosen to worship with us today. Uh, as I mentioned in my sermon last Sunday, uh, just because we can't necessarily meet in person right now does not mean that we stop worshiping. And so I am very grateful that you are able to uh, worship with us in this form today. A couple of, of announcements and housekeeping items. First of all, uh, we announced yesterday, or last Sunday, that uh, we were having a couple of events later on this month, and those events have been canceled or postponed. Uh, so please check our church website and our church Facebook page for more updates. We'll also be sending out emails uh, as ways to communicate with everyone, so be sure to check your email and contact the church office uh, or myself or Pastor Jen if you have any uh, questions or if you need to update your contact information. Uh, with all of that, I'm going to in invite you to uh, greet those who you are with, uh, whether that's in person or those who you're worshiping with right now uh, online, and uh, greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I invite you to join in a spirit of prayer God of light, be our vision, that we may through, see through your eyes, eyes that can see the world as it can be, even in times of deepest despair, eyes that can receive your light even in the darkest of valleys, eyes that can observe your grace and mercy even amidst suffering and death. Help us to live as your beloved children, trusting in you. Help us to live so that others may see in our living the reflection of your glory. Amen. And, invite, and I invite you all to join us in our choral call to worship. to stand in body or in spirit and join with me in our call to worship. God summons us to wake up and see. Light has come to lead us to all that is good. Our eyes have been opened to God's goodness. Seek to live as children of light. God sees beyond our outward appearances. God knows the intent of our heart. Even in the darkest of valleys, God's glory sustains us. Christ's love lights our way. We are the children of light. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to join and sing with us in our hymn of praise, Come and Find the Quiet Center. And if you all have a faith we sing at home, it is 2128.
please join with me now in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And here now we offer these words of assurance to one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof that God's love is towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And now it is a time for children, and I invite you, if you do have a candle at home, go ahead and grab that, and we can do our time for children together. Hi, everybody. My name is Pastor Jen, and I am here for a time for children. And we have been talking all through this Lent for these past few weeks. We've been talking about, that's right, Sophia, the candle. You know what color this is? Purple. It's a purple candle, that's right. The candle is purple because we're in the season of Lent here at the church. And Lent is noted, you can see we've got purple here, we have purple behind us, and purple reminds us that we're in Lent, and Lent is the time leading up to Easter. Is it Easter? Can you say Easter? Okay. So, leading up to Easter, it's the 40 days, okay. not including Sundays, before Easter. Easter. And Lent is the time when we pause, and we remember that God loves us. And so for here, during worship, the way we're pausing is by lighting the candle. So we're going to light the candle. I'm going to have Pastor Patrick help me light the candle, and he's going to hold it for us. And when we light the candle, we're going to sit. God somewhere at, 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 and so at, at, we're done with our time but before we finish we're going to remember to bless can I bless you you're blessed to be a blessing and God loves you so very much you are blessed to be a blessing and God loves you so very much Bye. and parents at home I invite you to bless your children and remind them that they are blessed to be a blessing and God loves them so very much. And parents, you've been through a lot this week. And remember, you are blessed to be a blessing and God loves you so very much. scripture reading for today comes from Psalm 23. Hear now the word of God as it is proclaimed by God's servant, the author of Psalm 23. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my 
my whole life long. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I have to say, this is pretty weird. Am I right? It's a little strange. I'm getting nods from the, the people who are here helping us worship. Thank you, by the way, everyone, for being here to help us worship tonight. Because that's the thing. Even though you're watching this uh, at least on Sunday morning, hopefully uh, some Sunday morning, this is actually Wednesday night for the rest of us. And so uh, we are a little bit off of schedule. But again, if you're watching this online, we're so glad that you're here. Hi, Grammy. I love you. It's strange having to imagine all of your faces here today in these empty pews. But as odd as it feels, I am glad that we can worship this way together. Because right now we face uncertain times, confusing times. And it feels like we are walking through a dark valley. Students and teachers who were looking forward to spring break now find themselves walking through a dark valley, unsure about when they'll get to go back to school. Students are worried, what if more extracurriculars are canceled? What about graduation for the seniors? What about summer vacation? Teachers are wrestling with how to mold and shape young minds and lives from a distance while being connected at that distance to the kiddos that they care for. Parents and other caregivers are faced with the difficult balance between working from home and making sure that their children are nurtured. That is, if they have the luxury of working from home at all, Meanwhile, small business owners are wondering how they'll keep their doors open and their rent paid, while still making sure they avoid getting sick themselves. Elderly and people with suppressed immune systems now face the uncertainty of whether or not they'll be able to get their medication refilled. These are people who were already physically and socially isolated before this pandemic, now they're wondering if they'll be able to get groceries from stores that have already been picked clean with the exception of perhaps unsweetened tea because even in a pandemic, apparently Texans don't drink unsweetened tea. I'm scared right now for those that I love and care for, especially those who are most vulnerable. I'm angry at the selfishness of hoarders who, and those who have been spreading uh, fear and those who have been spreading complacency and arrogance. Those who are spreading false senses of panic. And I'm certain of one thing. I'm uncertain about what new challenge tomorrow will It's in this unsettling time, and unsettling times like this, that we want answers. We want to know what the future will hold. We want everything to go back to normal as possible, as soon as possible. We're tired of our lives being interrupted by the number of confirmed cases and the disappointing news of more tired of the interruption, of feeling panicked and lost. And we don't know when things will get better. We don't know when this season of interruption will end. For those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time online, this Lent we here at First UMC Henrietta have been reflecting and meditating on the Psalms and talking about the strange Hebrew word Salah. Salah appears 71 times throughout the book of Psalms, and it, even though it appears so often in the book of Psalms, we, we don't know what it means exactly. 
Some biblical scholars say that salaf means something like lift or raise up, while others claim that it actually means something more like uh, bow down or kneel down. Whatever it means, salaf is an interruption. It causes us to stop and pause and notice. And so as I turn to the words of Psalm 23, I feel like the whole thing is one long, comforting Selah. When we feel lost, when we feel panicked, when we feel we cannot see God, Psalm 23 interrupts us. According to tradition, this is a psalm of David, but whoever wrote it, clearly they spent some time in the valley of deep, dark shadow. Yes, the psalmist experienced those idyllic green pastures and those calm, glassy waters that are referenced at the beginning of the psalm that refreshed their soul and brought life, but they also walked through valley of the shadow of death. The psalmist had enemies. Faced with the reality of difficulty and struggle, I can imagine that the psalmist knew what it felt like to be lost. But they aren't singing this prayer because they feel lost. They're singing it because they trust in God. Psalm 23 is usually described as a psalm of trust. These trust psalms are spoken in the midst of a dire crisis, but we're not told exactly what those crises are. In prayers for help, the emphasis is usually on crying out or uh, lamenting in complaint or requesting help from God from the crisis and concern that, that takes center stage, but not in Psalm 23. In Psalm 23, the emphasis is on trust. And we trust in response to a promise. God's promise to the ancient psalmist and to us today is this. I am with only possible responses to a promise are to believe it or to not believe it. Either we live as though the promise is real or not. Either we trust or we don't. In response to God's promise, the psalmist sang out, you lead me in right paths. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You care for me. I'm surrounded by your goodness and mercy no matter what. In the NRSV, we read, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That sounds pretty nice, right? Goodness and mercy following us along like a little lost puppy. Wanting our attention. We can either take it or leave it. We can acknowledge it or ignore it. It'll still be there, ready for us, because it's waiting. It's waiting there. Except goodness and mercy aren't waiting. A better translation would be that surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me, shall chase after me all the days of my life. This is the mercy and goodness of God. It is persistent. It will not let us go. When we try to run, mercy and goodness chase after us. Even when we don't know the way we're going, 
even though we may not recognize that mercy and goodness at first glance. Through it all, God is with us. God's our comfort. God is our generous guide and our abundant provider. God leads us in right paths. In the green pastures and by the still waters, goodness and mercy chase us. At the bottom of the darkest valley, even when we're surrounded by danger, God is there pursuing us, pursuing us with peace and restoration. Not by making a plan for us that we need to follow step by step by step. God doesn't magically protect us from the threats we face or and make them go away with a snap. Instead, Psalm 23 reminds us that God is with us no matter what. We can look for God in every situation because that's precisely where God's goodness and mercy meet us ready to guide us, if we'll let them. As I mentioned earlier, even though we're posting this worship uh, on Sunday morning, uh, this is actually Wednesday for the rest of us here, and even though this has interrupted my weekly routine and schedule, it meant I got to do something a little bit different than I typically get to on a Sunday morning worship, and that is, I got to go visit people today with Jen and Sophia. Now, rest assured, safety precautions were followed. We maintained uh, an appropriate physical distance. There was hand sanitizer available for everyone. And we got to go spend the afternoon with Judy Davidson and her grandson, Connor. Connor drove us around on their mule to give us a tour of their place and so that we could show Sophia some baby uh, calves, some newborn calves. In just a short time together, I saw God's mercy and goodness pursuing us. I saw that mercy pursuing us in the still waters of the cow tanks, full from the recent rains that we've had here. They were so full, in fact, they were kind of spreading over the rest of the, the, the land so that both the green pastures and the still waters were in the same exact place for us. It was very convenient. We noticed that you know, goodness was chasing us in the form of newborn calves chasing after the mule to, so that they could be cared for by their good shepherds. I mean, good ranchers. Good ranchers. Sorry about that. I could see goodness and mercy in the wildflowers, in the trees budding and blossoming, some that Judy could point out and say, I was there when that one was planted, or that one was there before my time. And in those early signs of spring, I could see God's goodness mercy pursuing me, chasing me this day, even in the midst of everything else. I saw goodness and mercy in love shared between a grandma and her grandson, even though he was beating her at Monopoly when we visited, although my money is on her winning out in the end. out there in creation, and time spent with those I love, safely in such a way that we didn't put anyone at undue risk. God restored me. Today, God reminded me that I am alive and that there is hope to be found. There is hope to be found, and goodness and mercy to be found, even though we may be walking in a valley of the shadow of death. Because God's goodness and mercy pursues me. It chases me down. It will not let me go. That's what we lean on. 
during this time, we lean on goodness and mercy to guide us. Not fears, not wants, not anger. We lean on goodness and mercy. We look for goodness and mercy and let them be our guides. I recognize, though, that this is just my experience. This is only my experience of God's goodness and mercy. And so I wonder, where have you seen God's mercy and goodness? Pursue me this week. I hope you'll let us know in the comments below so that together we can remind each other. Together we can remind one another that goodness and mercy cannot be canceled. They're never closed to us because they are as close to us as our very breath. Pursuing us, leading us, guiding us in right paths. This day. now will you please join with me in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day and this opportunity that we have to worship. God, in times like these when we want so much, We want to be together for worship. We want to make sure that our loved ones are safe and have what they need. We want all this to end. Remind us, good shepherd. That we have your grace mercy, and your goodness, that you bind us together, no matter where we are. This day we lift up all those who are sick, all those who are grieving, all those feel lonely right now. All those who have no one to pray for them, God, help us to be a phone call. Help us to be a call to check in, a kind note, the offer for help. Help us, God, to be the answer to prayer. All this we pray in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to join with us in our hymn of response, You Are Mine, it's number 2218 in the faith we sing. Oh, 
And now I invite you to join with me in the words of our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Before we
we sing our offertory, I wanted to uh, take this time to invite you, uh, if you are worshiping with us online, uh, to consider making a donation uh, online. We have the link in the description uh, of this video. Uh, so if you could consider supporting our mission and ministry here at First United Methodist Church of Henrietta, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Now I invite you to join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, you illuminate our lives with insights and possibilities. Help us share your love through our offerings of money, time, and talent. You call us to serve you and your people. Help us answer that call to ministry with our lives. All our gifts belong to you and we give today in gratitude for your abundant goodness. May we continue to dwell in your presence all our lives long. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in our hymn of action, Be Thou My Vision, number 451 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Thank <laughs> you. 
my sisters and my brothers in Christ, I'll say it again. This was weird. But you know what? God's goodness and mercy was weird. On this day that we're recording, and on the day in which you'll watch it. And so, wherever you go after you hit pause or you close out of your browser, wherever you go from here, whether that's just to the other room to spend some time with your family, maybe playing Monopoly, whether that's making the difficult decision to go out into the world and there's so much panic and so much anxiety. Or whether it's simply to be with nobody else around. Know this. You are not alone. We are not alone. God's mercy and goodness pursue chase us down. And there's nothing that could ever separate us from the love of that persistent blessings. I'll see you next week. Thank you.